So some time back I did a video on signals and slots and it was a pretty comprehensive video but I realized and actually somebody made a comment about this that I had forgotten to talk about moving data between widgets or between windows. And I thought well you know that's actually a decent topic to cover when it comes to signals and slots because that is something that we do uh, on a fairly regular basis. So that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to do a quick review of custom signals and slots and then we're going to talk about moving data between windows. So I'm going to start out with something that I've already shown before which is a, a QMain window, a main application window that has a login box attached to it. And so I'll just demonstrate this for you. I'm going to run this. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And yes, this is a very sophisticated password. When I click Submit, you'll see that my main window pops up. So I was able to successfully log in. If I want to close this, then it goes away. So how does this work? Well, let's take a look at the login box first. And the first thing that we're going to have here is a custom signal. And custom signals are defined from Qt Core. And you'll see from PySide 6, I'm importing Qt Core as QTC. And I have a custom signal called login success. There's no data being passed, just this particular signal. Okay, then I've got some buttons, a close and a submit or an exit and a submit. When I click submit, I've got that connected to a custom slot here called on submit. This is pretty regular. And then I'm checking to see if the user ID is JSON and the password is password. Yes, I know it's very sophisticated, but you know, example code doesn't always have to be ridiculously complex. This is where the magic starts to happen. So if my user ID and password are correct, then it runs this line of code, which is login success dot emit. So that is this custom signal up here is actually being emitted. And then it also closes this window. I can run this independently and it will emit the signal. However, the signal doesn't go anywhere because I don't have anything loosely connected here. So if we look at the code for the main window, you'll see I've got my menu option. Okay, Then in the init method, the first thing I want my main window to do is pop up the login form. So I'm creating the login form here and this is where if the uh, login is successful and that signal is emitted, then if that's emitted, then it's connected to self.show. So in other words, if this signal from over here is actually emitted, then I want to show the actual QMain window. And then this is where I show the login form. So again, if I right click and run this thing, you'll see it instantly pops up the login form because that's what I'm telling my QMain window to do. Before you do anything else, bring up the login form. If I log in and I log in successfully, the signal gets emitted and then it brings up my QMain window. If I'm not able to log in, I can show you that very quickly. So if we type in my user ID and a bunch of gibberish, it just tells me it's an invalid user ID or password. If I close this login form, you'll see the application exits. And that's because that signal was actually never emitted. Okay, that's a quick review of a simple custom signal. But what about if we want to have data go back and forth between windows. All right, I have another example here. One is going to be show messages, the other is going to be edit messages. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. 
and then we'll dig into how this works. So when I run this, you'll see I get a show messages window here, and I've got two messages in the display called hello everyone. If I click exit, we exit. It's pretty obvious. However, if I hit edit, you'll see it brings me up a completely other window that allows me to edit the messages. So if I go down here to message number two and I change that to world and hit enter, I can click submit or hit enter. You'll see now that that message has been passed back and it updated this initial screen. If I do it again, this is the, if I hit submit, you'll see this is the world and then I can close this application. Okay, so how does this happen again? Well, it's essentially the same thing in, as the previous example as I showed you. However, I'm actually telling it to pass data back with it. So in the edit messages, we'll start here in edit messages just like we did with the dialog box uh, or the login uh, box, excuse me. I'm going to create a custom signal called submitted and that is going to be another signal. However, you'll notice now that I'm telling it that I'm going to pass two strings instead of just emitting the signal. So in this particular case, I'm telling it just emit the signal, but I'm going to pass you two strings as well. And that's going to be message one and message two. Okay, um, you might be asking, I'm, I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but you might be asking, how do we even get the messages over to the edit messages window? Well, and that's actually pretty simple. All I do is I pass them in when I create this window. And you'll see that in my setup, uh, my setup section here, I am setting those two line edits to what I passed in. So to get the data to the edit messages window is pretty simple. All I have to do is pass it in when I go ahead and create it, spawn it, materialize it, whatever you want to call it. However, getting the data back out is going to require this custom signal. So now that I have that su uh, submitted signal created and I have told it that I want to pass out of here two strings, then what do we do? Okay, so the person using the window is going to make changes, and they may not make any changes, but let's say they hit the submit button. So I am connecting that to a custom method called on submit. So that's when they actually push the button. Down here on on submit, again, I'm saying self.submitted. And that's self.submitted dot emit. However, this time I'm going to be sending it the contents of the message one and message two windows. So that's line entry message one dot text dot strip and strip just removes the beginning and trailing blanks. So if I don't want those in there. And I do the same thing for message two and then it runs self.close. Okay, so after I've submitted this signal, I just want to close this window. I don't need it open again. All right, now how do we make the connection, the loose connection, and I say loose because we always want to keep two windows like this very loosely coupled. I'll get into that uh, a little bit further down the uh, video here. So in show messages, it's going to be a little bit different. Okay, so I have a button here on my main window called um, edit, which is right here. That is connected to a custom method called on edit. And with on edit, you'll see this is where I'm creating the form to edit my messages. And I'm passing in message one and message two. And this is where I'm actually making the connection between the signal and the slot. So from my form edit messages, if that signal 
that submitted signal is emitted, I want you to connect it to update messages. And then down here, I actually have my custom method, which is update messages. I've defined it as a slot, and I'm telling it that I want it to take in two strings. So when update messages is ran, you'll see I'm passing in message one and message two. Okay, these are coming from the signal here. So that's these two. They will get passed over here. And then I take my labels on my show messages window and I do a set text for message one and message two. So again to demonstrate, if I run my show messages, and this hello everyone is actually just me setting them in the init method. So I'm not really passing anything into here, I'm just setting them inside the init method. So again when I run this, it has those two defaults. If I click edit, when I spawn in this second window, I'm passing hello and everyone into this window. Then if I edit this and I hit submit, that will emit the signal and because I have this custom signal set up to send two strings, I can pass message one and message two. So I hit submit and message one and message two are submitted. If I hit edit and I blank these out and I hit submit, now you'll see I get absolutely nothing. If I hit edit, 111, 222, two, two, submit 111 and 222. Two, two. Okay, not too difficult, but it can be a little bit intimidating if you haven't done this before. So what I've done here is I've actually set up a little bit of a bit of a diagram here and I'm going to take that out for a second. So these are our two windows just in some diagramming software. Here's our show messages and here's our edit messages. In the edit messages we are going to have a custom signal which is the submitted signal and then that is connected to a slot called update messages. So when I'm in my edit message window, when I hit the submit button, that is going to emit this signal. And notice how I've got the signals separated from the actual window itself. So these are visualizations of both of our windows. Notice how these two windows are not connected whatsoever. Now let's make the connection. So I'm going to go from my signal over to my slot. So when I hit the submit button, it grabs those two, uh, those two line edits, the message one and message two. They are in the signal, which is then sent over to the slot, which is our update messages, which then updates the messages in the show messages window. This is the way that you should do it because it creates a very loose coupling between these two windows. So notice how I don't have a direct connection like this between these two windows. I don't want that. I want to keep these two windows as independent as I possibly can. And signals and slots lets me do that. And you may think, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, let's say that we come back here and on our show messages window, these change from labels to um, text entries. So they become multi-line text. I don't have to care about what's coming out of here. All I have to do is take that data and put them into, uh, let's say, text edit widgets instead of line entries or labels. Right now these are just defined as two specific labels. If I change them to line edits or text edits, all I have to do is make that change here. 
if I were to directly connect or couple these two windows together by maybe going out and grabbing the data out of the second window, then I wouldn't actually be able to do that as easily. So signals and slots gives me a very loose coupling, which is what you see in this diagram. There's an extremely loose connection between these. I want you to think of these two message windows, the show messages and edit messages, as essentially black boxes. They don't really need to know that much about each other. All this one knows is I get some data when I'm created and then I've got this custom signal that I can emit when the end user presses the submit button. I'm sending that over to a slot then that slot um, updates the messages and then the screen repaints. Okay, so again, <clears throat> excuse me, doing this type of um, way of doing this is probably about the best way that, that you can do it. In other words, you create a custom signal, emit the data, which is what we're doing right here. We're emitting this data. We come over here to show messages and we do this code right here. So this particular code right here, this edit messages, um, submitted.connect, that is this connection right there. That's the way you can visualize it. And then that is going to call this update messages method, which is going to refresh the data. So again, if I run it, I hit edit, I can go here, change this to world, hit enter or submit, and it changes to world. Now, you may say, well, what is a practical? I mean, this is just a toy application moving data between windows, but what is a good real, real world example? Well, let's say that you have a window open that has a table widget and you have it loaded with a bunch of data. Uh, most likely from a database, but doesn't have to be from a database. But let's say that you want to filter it. Um, I can have a button that I can push that brings up another window with filter criteria. I put in how I want to filter that data. So let's say I'm looking for first names that are JSON. So on my filter criteria window, I can put in a first name of JSON hit submit and let's say you're pulling it from a database I may actually build the SQL statement that I want to use to read the database again build that and then send that back to the previous window so again like in this edit messages if this was a filter screen I could build my custom SQL statement and then when I'm done I can then send that back to the window with the table widget and I can refresh the table using my newly created SQL statement. And that lets me filter my data. And I do that type of thing all the time. I have um, a table widget that's loaded with a bunch of data that came from a database. If I want to take and refresh it with filter criteria or search criteria, I'll bring up another window, let you fill in the search criteria, you hit submit, it goes sends that uh, newly formed SQL statement back and then it goes ahead and uh, refreshes the table widget. So that's it. That is how you send data using custom signals and slots. Any questions for me? Go ahead and put them in the comments. And other than that, happy coding!